Hi everyone. Today I am doing some carnivore meal prep and I'm focusing on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you are new here, welcome so much. Please check out some of my other videos and consider becoming a subscriber. For all my returning viewers, welcome back and I hope you liked today's video. Okay everyone, today uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, meal prep uh, for, you know, we're wrapping up carnivore month so I've got a lot of things going on here. Um, and this probably isn't everything I'm going to do, but this is what I'm going to do, <laughs> you know, for the purpose of today's video. I'm going to make a stew out of some stewing beef and these beef uh, rib fingers, they're called. I'm going to cook some eggs because I started off the month with some eggs from a bag and did not like those. So I'm sticking to eggs made in my dash. Um, the stew will be made in the crock pot. I'm going to sous vide some blade steaks, which I think in the US they're very similar to chuck steaks. And I'm going to do a version two of the butter mayo from the two crazy ketos. I'm doing a few tips and tricks that my viewers gave me the last time I did it because I want it to be a little more spreadable out of the fridge. So uh, that, that's basically what's going to happen today. Um, so I'm gonna start with the stew first. Okay, so the, let's talk about what's going in the stew. This is going to be a really simple stew. It's uh, going to be two kinds of beef here. I've got regular stewing beef that I've cut into bite-sized pieces. This is uh, one and a half pounds. Um, I find that just plain stewing beef is kind of boring. It's, it's uh, generally not very fatty, not very satisfying. I like to combine it with other meats. Um, and this is one of my favorite. I, I would have taken this out of the package, but I wanted to uh, show you what it looks like when you are looking for it at the store. It's called beef rib finger meat boneless. So I don't know what it's called in, in the US or other, but basically I'm showing you what it looks like in the package. It's long boneless pieces of rib meat. It is super tender, super fatty and, uh, delicious in a stew. So uh, I'm going to take this to the sink and, and uh, bring it back so that I can cut it up into bite-sized pieces um, and then we'll put it into the crock pot. So I'll, I'll see you back in a moment. I've got my rib finger meat here ready to cut up into bite-sized pieces. Um, so you, this will give you a better idea of what it, what it looks like. It's basically these nice long strips. I'm just gonna cut them in chunks or cubes or like that. So I, I did weigh this meat and it was about two and a half pounds. So, and that was one and a half pounds. So that's how much is going in the crock pot. It should be plenty big enough. So I'm just gonna move over here. Um, I'm going to, well, I'm just gonna wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, so all this is, I'm just, this is basically one of those dump and forget meals. Um, it can cook all day, six to eight hours on low. I'm going to be using some beef bone broth in there um, to give it some flavor. I don't, because I didn't have any, uh, so I'm, this is a powdered uh, bone broth. I, I get this from iHerb. I'm um, sure you can get it from Amazon. Um, it's just uh, it's just a powder. You reconstitute it with water. So I'm going to put in a couple of scoops and some water. Um, first, I'm going to dump my meat in. We've got a lot of meat in here. This is four pounds. It should last me a couple of days. Uh, we've got rainy, cold weather here stores, the shelves are bare, we've had flooding, everything, everything is happening here in beautiful British Columbia. Um, 
There are shortages of everything. I'm hoping to get more eggs today, but I'm gonna cook what I have. A couple of scoops of this bone broth powder, but this uh, stew should last a couple of days, probably three days or something. It's uh, one of those comfort food things. I may need to add salt. I just don't know yet because I'm not sure how much flavor I'll get from the bone broth. We'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm adding two cups of water. This is a two cup measure. And I'm gonna let this go and see if that gives enough liquid. I can always add more liquid. I can always add salt. I think it's going to be enough. I can, I can add other seasonings later, depending on this bone broth and how it flavors it. And I can also add, if I wanna thicken the, the sauce that it's in, I can add a bit of xanthan gum. I probably won't, but that option, it does exist. So, just going to try to smooth all this around. The, the powder will of course look lumpy, but later on it'll be okay. So I'm just going to scrape my spoon here because a lot of the powder has stuck to the spoon. Okay, so that lid is going on. Now we can forget about that for a few hours. So my next thing that I'm going to make, um, because I'm doing uh, bacon, butter, eggs, I'm going to try the butter mayo again. So let me tell you about the butter mayo. That comes from the two crazy ketos. I made it uh, maybe three weeks ago um, on one of my prep videos and um, love the flavor. Um, what I didn't love about it was how it came out of the fridge so hard and you'd have to leave, you'd have to remember to bring it out to make it, uh, you know, sort of spreadable, but it was really only spreadable, like say slightly softened butter. So a lot of the viewers gave me some good tips, like maybe adding more oil, doubling the egg yolks, that kind of thing. So. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to double the egg yolks and see how that goes. I'm also going to use my electric mixer with the whips attached. One of, the, one of my uh, viewers suggested that. They said that it worked for them. I think it was uh, Carrie's mama or some, maybe. I could be, I could be wrong. Carly, Carly's, Carly's mama, Carly's mama. Okay, so I'm going to use, like I said, I'm going to use this instead of the stick blender. Having, I, I took out my back yesterday, so I'm having some issues and I just, just can't imagine myself standing there with the stick blender for however long that took. And so hopefully Carly's mama is right and I can do it this way, we'll see. Um, so what's going in here? Oh, I need a jar or a, I'm just gonna use a, a thingy. This should do. So I've got four egg yolks, which is double what I used last time. And I'm going to link the Two Crazy Ketos video down below so that you can see how they made it. Um, Cause they had, you know, lots of good tips and everything. I'm going to put in a tablespoon. They use Dijon. I only have brown spicy mustard, um, but it's it's some extra flavor. So I'm going to use I'm going to use that a tablespoon of that. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't get it everywhere. And I'm going to use half a teaspoon of Redmond salt. I buy it in the big bag. And, um, and then I put it in a little jar for easy spooning. That's what it looks like. It's more economical that way. Um, so that's half a teaspoon. So I'm, I'm keeping all the other measurements the same, um, although I am kind of doing it from memory, so hopefully it's the same. I'm going to use a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. 
Actually, I think it was two teaspoons, so I'll go a little bit less. Oh, and I do have my butter over here. This has been melted and I cooled it down just by letting it sit at room temperature. So it's kind of separated. I used one cup of grass-fed butter. Yeah, that's kind of room temperature, so that's good. Let's see how this goes. Just wanted to say, because I forgot to say it, I'm going to very slowly add the melted butter in, making sure that this is staying um, thick every time. Wow, you guys, to be honest, that was way easier than using the stick blender. Tastes like mayonnaise. Let's see here. Okay, gotta come and look at the consistency of this. So, check it out. I'm really hoping that the extra, you know, liquid from the egg yolks is going to make this spreadable out of the fridge. And I will definitely put this in the fridge. And when we come back later for some of the other things, I will show you what it's like so that you know. Maybe next time it might be an extra egg yolk. I don't know, but this was four egg yolks. Okay, be right back in the next segment. Okay, so I'm going to get my uh, sous vide wand uh, with the right temperature and time set up first because uh, it can take a few minutes for the water to heat up. I did put hot water in there to hopefully help it along. These uh, steaks need to be tender. Uh, they are blade steaks, which is similar to a chuck steak. So. I will be cooking this for 10 hours at 130 degrees, hoping to get a tender medium rare steak for way less money than what I would normally pay for a tender medium rare steak. So that's, that's the plan. So let's, uh, let's put this uh, on the right temperature. So 130 and 10 hours. Okay. So that will take a moment to warm up. And while we're waiting, well, it might take five minutes to warm up, I'm not sure. But while we're waiting, I'm going to put some salt on. And that's just the Redmond's fine salt and a little bit of garlic powder. So now I'm going to use this. I do have silicone bags, but I want to put, like, these are both really large steaks and my silicone bags are not that big. You can get them um, and I, I do use them for smaller steaks and for chicken breast. This is just a regular Ziploc bag, free, but not, not just regular, it's freezer bag, which are safe up to 158 degrees. And um, they're uh, like, microwavable, BPA-free, all, all those things. You don't want to use a cheap uh, plastic bag from the dollar store or anything like that. You want to make sure you get the good ones if you're going to use this. So then I'm going to um, try to get as much air out as I can on my own here. And then we let the water do the rest as we lower it in. So where are we? We're at 100 degrees just over 100 degrees. So I'm just gonna wait on that for a moment. This is, these clips are what I will use to clip them to the side. And I may have to put more water in 
Uh, I just want to see where we end up. So I'm just going to get some more water ready. Okay, so I'm just lowering my steaks in. And I think I will add a little bit more water. And then I'm going to clip that I close that. And then I'm just clipping this down. That helps to keep the meat under the water. And now we wait for our 10 hours. So then the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to cook up hopefully the rest of my eggs. I'm just gonna get my dash cooker. So this is a fantastic little unit. I just, I just love it. Um, I like my eggs medium, so the whites are perfectly hard and the yolks are kind of soft, but not runny soft. So I, I put mine on, like I just measure in this little handy thing, it'll say hard, medium, soft, and you just find whichever, wherever your preference is, I'm, I'm going to fill it up to medium. And then that just goes in here. And then you put the eggs in. Now, the instructions that came with this say you're supposed to poke a hole in each egg using this little thing at the bottom. I'll show it to you. This comes off. And there's this little egg poker at the bottom. I used it the very first time. And I thought, that's a pain. I'm never going to make these eggs if I have to poke a hole in the bottom of every one. And so I didn't do it the next time and my eggs turned out perfect. So you don't need to do it. The other thing that's cool about this little cooker is that they turn out the way you like them, but they also are easy to peel. So that's kind of nice. So uh, I really hope I can get some more eggs because I only have one egg left after all this. And boy, the, oh, I just noticed that this egg that I put in is cracked. It has a crack in it. So I try, I, I try not to, I try to make sure that there's no cracked eggs in there. It'll work, but you do risk it a uh, running egg everywhere if it breaks open anymore. So I'll just use that in some fried eggs later. And then you turn it on and you wait. The, the buzzer will go and then what I usually do is I rinse it in cold, rinse them in cold water with even some ice, like a bowl of ice water. And then I, and then uh, they are good to go. So we'll just wait for that to finish. It only takes a few minutes and then we can peel an egg and you'll see how wonderful they are inside. Okay, these are done. I've got some ice water here. The ice cubes have melted, but the water is still cold. So be careful because there's still steam coming up if you do have one of these. All the pieces can be washed, which is nice, um, either by hand or in the dishwasher. Okay, so we'll just let those cool down, then I will peel one. All right, they're just a little bit warm to the touch, but I'm going to peel one. And I took the butter mayo out of the fridge. It's only been in there for an hour, so um, it's not yet a true test, but I really wanted to have some of it on this egg. Later, when we do the, um, when I show you the beef stew, this will have been in the fridge for several hours. So we will see what that looks like. Okay. So, oh, they're a little bit harder than what I was hoping for. I must not have measured that accurately, but that's okay. Some, and sometimes I do think there's a hot spot. I should probably, I'm gonna peel a second one. I'm just gonna take a random one, because sometimes 
uh, some of them are harder than others, and I don't know why that is. I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's a hot spot in there somewhere. Yeah, that one feels pretty firm too. Well, it's a good thing I have the butter mayo to make them nice, but they peel so easy. That's that's one of the things I like. Okay, well, that one's a little bit better. Anyways, so here's the butter mayo after an hour. Oh, it's very spreadable. So that's nice. So let me see here. You know, but let's see what it's like in six hours. If it stays similar to this, that'll be perfect. I will be very happy. Mm. Mm. That is delicious. Okay, well, let's see what this is like in a few hours. Um, I guess this will be my lunch. And we're going to be back in the next segment. Okay, I'm just taking out my steak. I've got the broiler on. I'm just going to, you know, broil these to get a little bit of a, a sear on them because they, they come out looking kind of gray and unappetizing and we want to have a little bit of a crust on them. So I'm going to stick these under the broiler for a couple minutes per side and then I will show you the stew, how the stew came out. So the stew is, uh, is ready. I did end up adding a teaspoon of salt and uh, what I'm going to, so this, I think this has been going for about eight hours. Or, or so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it cool down. Uh, I'm not going to thicken the, the, the gravy because what I want to do is, is let this cool down and then uh, put it in the fridge overnight. Um, so in a couple hours after it's cooled down, I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight tonight and let, um, let the fat crust form on top take that off and underneath there should be beef, what I call beef jello. It'll be kind of a jiggly, um, jiggly jello. Jiggly, jiggly jello. Of beef with that stewing meat. And, and that's how I like to eat it. So um, it won't really need anything else for my liking. So uh, yeah, so that's got to sit overnight in gel. Jiggly, jiggly jello. And uh, I'm going to slice up, once the steak comes out of the oven, I'm going to slice that up. But while we're waiting for that, uh, I've had this in the fridge all day. So I want to see how it is. I'm just gonna grab a spoon. The, the one that I made before was hard as a rock. Um, and I used to have to do things to soften it up before I used it. Okay, so I would call this semi-soft. I mean, it's not soft like mayo, but it's coming out like the other stuff I would have to like really get in there and chisel out a, a bit and then let it soften. Um, but this is looking pretty good. So let me see. How that is on a bun. These are my caraway buns that I made yesterday. Um, you should have hopefully have seen that video by now or, or that it's out there. Um, I will definitely link it down below. Oh yeah, look at that. That is totally spreadable. That's much better. So there you go. Mm. It's definitely um, a little creamier than the other butter mayo. So I might even, hmm. next time I make this. I'm not done with you yet, mayo. I might add an extra yolk. I think then it'll be, it'll be perfect. I mean, this, this is, this is actually workable. I, I'm going to, I'm going to use this for a couple of days and see, and see how it is, how I am with it. Um, maybe next time I can soften it up just a little bit more, um, but I may not have to. I may be happy with this. So, 
So there we go. I've got at least two or three weeks worth of butter mayo here. I've got my buns. I've got my eggs, my beef stew, and I'm just going to check on my steak, which is broiling. Okay, well, I'm gonna call that done. All right, let's see what these look like inside. This one is thicker than that one, so I anticipate it's gonna look pretty inside. Oh yeah, look at that. There's Teddy right on cue. Okay, so that one is nice uh, color. Uh, let me see this one. It's a little bit smaller. That's well, still good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece. Give that a try. Hmm. I never thought a blade steak would taste like that. That is really good. I mean, I have another video for blade steak. It was one of my early videos and I baked that thing in the oven. I braised it for, I don't know, two or three hours, um, which makes it tender. And, and, you know, that was good. I had a creamy sauce and everything, but to have it medium rare and tender because blade steak is quite flavorful um, for beef. Like it's a nice, it's a nice flavor of beef. Um, but I'm so used to always having it well done. So uh, this this is really good. I I'm gonna love that. So I I will be slicing this all up into thin slices and putting that in the fridge. These will go in the fridge. That will go in the fridge. And I've got a lot of uh, beef and eggs to eat for the next few days. Um, if you know uh, what's happening in our part of the world here, there's lineups at the gas stations, the store shelves are, are, are empty in some areas um, because of the flooding in the Pacific Northwest. So we, we live right kind of, uh, we're, we're in Langley which is next door to Abbotsford where the Sumas Prairie is and we're just a hop, skip and a jump to the border where the in Washington State, they're completely flooded as well. So yeah, like, you know, stay safe everyone. Um, don't hoard food because <laughs> that's what's happening out there. I, I, went, I did go out today and I bought just enough for what we need for the next few days and uh, and I still have lots of meat in the freezer from cutting my own steaks and things. I mean, it's good to be prepared always for a few days, but um, you know, you don't need five or six dozen eggs to last you a week. So, unless you're doing the egg fast, but that's another story. Anyways, um, so stay safe everyone and uh, look out for your neighbors and we will see you on the next video. Is there going to be a camera in here? Where did I put? I could have sworn I had tongs here a minute ago.